All right, Mr. Babers, go ahead. Okay, well, hopefully everyone's doing well uh, during this time of being uh, socially distanced. Uh, my name is Aaron Babers. I'm uh, the ag teacher and FFA advisor at Dodson High School. And uh, very thankful that Mr. Lejern has asked me to, uh, to help out and reach out to some people out there who are wanting to continue learning during this time that we're away from school. Uh, today, I'm, I'm going to talk about a couple things with you uh, that maybe maybe you don't get in many traditional ag classes. Uh, not really sure about that. Hopefully, you are learning some things along these lines. But with, with so many people uh, being in their houses and stuff right now and during a time where we're normally not, uh, I would imagine that a lot of us are visiting the pantry and the refrigerator a lot more than what we normally would be during the day. So I, I thought that I would take this opportunity to talk to you a little bit about uh, food labeling, uh, the parts of the packages of the food that we eat on a daily basis, and talk to you a little bit about uh, the things that are required by the FDA to be on food packages, uh, and also how to figure out some nutritional information and and just know your way around the things that you're eating every day, uh, things that, that most people are not fully aware of. Okay, so uh, there's two things that I'm going to talk to you about today. And one of those, I'm just going to write two objectives up here at the top of this paper, but we're going to discuss these two things today. Okay, we're going to learn what we call a principal display panel. And you'll hear me refer to this as a PDP throughout the video. So we're going to learn what the principal display panel is and the different components of it. And then we're going to also talk about another part of the package that we call the information panel. And hopefully that's big enough to where everybody can see. Um, I'm going to try to write as neatly as I can throughout this video. So I'm going to primarily be working off of this document camera. At times, I will swap the camera around to where you'll you'll see me, and then you might see me holding up uh, some different food labels to where you can get a little better look at some of those things in which you would be able to through the document camera. So I'm going to start with the first thing that I listed up here first, which is talking about what the principal display panel is. OK, and simply put a principal display panel. Let me swap the camera around. Simply put, a, a principal display panel is what the consumer sees when he or she is in a store and they are uh, looking to purchase an item off the shelf. It is the first thing off of a food package that jumps out to you. So I have I have different uh, principal display panels that I'm going to show you today on just really common boxes that that we see on a daily basis. And the first one I'm gonna grab is a box of Fruit Loops, okay? So everybody is really familiar with this. This may have been something that when you were a young child, you ate may, maybe something that you still favor. And, and we're really familiar with this box. We, we've seen other boxes like this. Uh, and, and there are different things that I wanna to talk to you today about that, that we see on these boxes. So I want you just to take a minute uh, to just observe this box, and I'm going to be quiet for a minute, but I want you to to just look at some of the things on this box that, that jump out to you, and I'm going to give you about 20 seconds to do so. OK, and, and normally when I'm in class and I teach a lesson like this, the things that that most students note about uh, jumping out to them is they, they note the colors of the boxes. They note uh, the, the name of the product. Uh, and, and if we look on things like cereals, most of the time we have a mascot. So so we have the toucan on the Fruit Loops box. And this is something that that we, we do this for different markets. So so whoever we're trying to appeal to, and, and in the case of, of Fruit Loops boxes, we're oftentimes trying to appeal to young kids. So this is something that might make a person want to buy the Kellogg's brand of Fruit Loops instead of a, a store brand, because oftentimes a store brand doesn't have a mascot. And, and a kid's gonna hold up the box and they're gonna be like, well, mom, this has got the mascot on it, I gotta have that. And, and it's something that makes uh, the consumer 
more aware of the product and they're more lo more likely to get it. Okay, so hopefully these are things that you've seen before and that you've noticed. Today, I want to just talk about the things that are required on a box and then some of the things that that are not required on a box, but are oftentimes there. So remember, we call this the principal display panel. And these are the things that are required on a principal display panel by law. Okay, so the first thing, and I'm, I'm mainly working from the top of the box down, these are the things that are required. Okay, the first thing that is required is a brand name. Okay, the second thing that is required oftentimes is a product name. And I'm going to draw a little arrow right here just to go to something that we that's more specific than the product name. I'm going to show you a couple of examples of that. Um, and it's what we call the statement of identity. Okay, and I'll, and I'll show you statement of identity in a minute. It's just something that is more specific than the name Fruit Loop. Okay. Not all packages have a, uh, a product name and statement of identity. Sometimes on some things, uh, the two are so similar that there, there's no need for both of them. Okay, and then the other thing that's required is the weight. Okay, and we, we call that on a dry package, we call it the net weight. And we express this in two different terms. We have to put it in uh, American terms as well as metric terms. So for the, product, the products we're going to look at today, this is going to be expressed in ounces as well as grams. Okay, so we're going to look at the Fruit Loops box again, and I'm just going to point out to you the, the places where these things are, and then I'm going to test you on another box in just a moment just to see if you can find all of these elements on there. Okay, so Kellogg's is our brand name for this particular product, and then Fruit Loops is the product name. Okay, so that's the difference between the brand name. The brand name is Kellogg's. The product name is Fruit Loops. Okay. We do have a statement of identity on this product, and I'm going to get this really close. Hopefully, you're going to be able to see it. And right under where it says Fruit Loops, it says uh, sweetened multigrain cereal. Okay, so that is the the legally required statement of identity. The reason why we have that is because if a if a person were to come from a foreign country. Uh, where maybe Fruit Loops are not sold, if they were to pick this up off of an American shelf, they have to know for sure what a Fruit Loop is. Uh, we know what Fruit Loops are because we've been around them our entire life. But a person who's never seen that before, they might pick this up and think it has fruit in it. The FDA requires that we explicitly label all of our products. And then on this box, um, it has our net weight down here. That's going to always pretty much be at the bottom of the box. It can be on the left side or the right side. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so those are the basic parts of a PDP. Some other things that they're not required by law, but things that are oftentimes there. On cereals, most of the time we have a mascot, and then usually we have a picture of the product. I would say 90% of the things you buy have a picture of the product. It helps people make better decisions when they're buying things. Okay? So I'm going to show you a... A different box, and I'm going to give you 20 seconds, I guess, again, to uh, to try to identify the different parts on the outside of this box. And I'll show you different views of it to where you can see every component. So here you're trying to identify the brand name, the product name, uh, seeing if there's a statement of identity, and then also the net weight.
Okay, so on this box, you should have identified the brand name as being Kellogg's again. And then you should have identified the product name. It, usually the product name is the biggest thing on the box in most cases. The product name is Corn Flakes. Okay, now you notice I, I zoomed in down here and there's a slogan. This is another optional thing that's on PDPs is a slogan. This is, there is um, it says the original and the best. Okay, that is not a statement of identity. It's in a location where the, the statement of, of identity might would normally be. Um, but our product name is really plain, Corn Flakes. In this case, the product name and the statement of identity serve the same purpose. So there's no, there's no need for having both of those stated on the box. Any person that picks this up, they're going to just be able to figure out that this is, these are flakes of corn. And there's no need for a statement of identity because the product name is plain enough. Okay. On things like Cheerios, um, there's there's a statement of identity on things like Fruit Loops. We just looked at that saying that there was a statement of identity on that. Those are things that have different meanings. Doesn't just refer to the food products. So there has to be that clarification there. And then you should have found that our net weight was down here. It does state it. Um, in this case, it also states it in Spanish as well. But but it, it puts things in terms of grams, which is the metric unit and then ounces, which is the standard unit that we use in the United States, okay? So that makes it to where this package can be sold in other places around the world, okay? So, so those are the parts of the principal display panel on the front of most food packages. So just remember, and I'm gonna just show you this again, that these are the legally required components. Okay. We have to have a brand name. We have to have a product name. If that product name is not specific enough, we have to have a statement of identity. And then we have to have a net weight. Okay. On liquids, this will be different. We won't put a net weight. We'll put a capacity or a volume, and that will be in ounces or milliliters. Okay. Some other things, and we'll just call these extras, things that are not required, but help distinguish one product from another are mascots, slogans, and then a picture or an illustration of the product. Okay. So hopefully, hopefully we have a good understanding of that. And I'll just give you another example of a mascot and a slogan that we're all familiar with. Frosted Flakes. I don't have a Frosted Flakes box to show you, but but you should know that the, the mascot is Tony the Tiger and the slogan is they're great. And then also we have a picture of the product uh, on just about every single product that we that we see throughout the grocery store. OK, and I'll show you another example, too, while we're on it. We have a box of Oreos here. OK, in the Oreo box or, or the Oreo package, it has a picture of the product. It has the name. It has a brand name, which is Nabisco. Um, in case you didn't know what Nabisco stood for, it's a it's a shortened name for the National Biscuit Company. Uh, so that's a good bonus question for you teachers to ask your students, to, just to see if anybody knows that. I've had students that actually knew that before, and I, I never taught them that before. But we have a, a really enlarged picture, and we, also, we always have to have this thing right here uh, that we see a lot of times and it says enlarge to show detail. I don't know if you can see that or not, but, but we see that a lot on bags of chips and, and things like that. So um, anyways, so, so that's another example of a uh, common package that we see. Okay. So We've already checked this off the list. We've talked about what the principal display panel is. And then the next thing I'm gonna go over with you guys is the information panel. Okay, and show you where the information panel is and, um, and what that looks like and the different components of it and, um, and, and things such as that. So we've got several of these that we're gonna look at today. Okay, so these are the required components of a nutrition 
I'm sorry, an information panel. An information panel um, is on usually the right side of the box. Sometimes it's on the back side of the package. And I'll show you some examples of that in a minute. But these are the parts of the information panel. And we sometimes refer to this as the IP. Just like with the principal display panel, we refer to that as the PDP. So the parts of the information panel, there are several parts to that. These are all required. We have to have a nutrition label. And this tells us the amount of different vitamins, minerals, nutrients, uh, calorie information, um, carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, things such as that. So we have to have a nutrition label that tells us those things. We also have to have an ingredients list. Okay. After that, we have to have allergens. We'll talk about what these allergens are in just a few minutes. And then finally, we have to have information about the people who manufacture the product. And that's on there just to validate who made the product, to val validate their real place. Um, and then it serves another, another purpose too. If we have a food recall, we know who to contact about the, the problem with the food product. Okay. So let's look at a couple different packages. We're going we're gonna to use the same ones that we've been using throughout this lesson, but we're going to look at the cornflakes one first. Okay, so the cornflakes box, um, I told you that the, the information panel is usually on the right side of the box, on the right side of where you would see the PDP, the principal display panel. I'm not sure why that's the law. My guess is that most people are right-handed, and when they grab a box, maybe they're more tempted to turn the box to where the right side is facing them if they have to turn around. But, but we turn, excuse me, we turn this, and then we see everything on this side of the box is the nutrition label, the, the ingredients list, the allergens, the manufacturer information. That's all on this side. That's all the information panel. Okay, and I'll get this closer to where you can kind of see some more of those components in detail. Okay. I told you there were some exceptions to this rule about the, the information panel being on the right side of the box. Keep in mind that, that foods come in all different types of packages. We, we know that. We've, we've been accustomed to that our entire lives. Sometimes they come in really thin boxes and there's not enough room on the side of the box for information panel. Uh, sometimes the way that the package is made, there's, there's no feasible way of putting it on the right side. So it's acceptable in that case to put it on the back, okay? So we're gonna go back to the Oreos package here. If you look at Oreos package, the way they, they package these things is they, they pretty much put uh, trays of cookies into like a big plastic tube uh, is really a good way to think about it. And then they seal up the ends, okay? Um, there's no good place, like if this is the way the PDP is oriented, when we turn it to the right, we've got a sealed side of the package, and that's not really a good way to, to try to display a, a information panel. So then they put it on the back side of the package. Okay. So that's really just a couple of different examples there. Uh, drinks are the same way. Drinks are usually the, the part of the bottle that's going to be facing the consumer to the right of that is where the information panel is. We have information panels on every kind of food. I mean, even water. Water doesn't really have much in it, um, but it does have some minerals. We we just have to be very explicit about the things that we um, that we sell in the United States to make sure that everybody is getting the correct information and they're getting good, true information. Okay. So going back to our material here. These are our parts of the information panel. Okay, and I'm going to talk about the nutrition label first. Okay, and the only thing I'm going to talk about with the nutrition label is I don't I don't want this video to extend out extremely far, but 
Um, I want to talk about what calories are, and I want to talk about the, the things in food that actually have calories in them. Because there's so many things on the nutrition label. I think it's valuable for us to understand what actually has calories in it and what does not. Okay. So let's talk about what a calorie is. Uh, and there's a really good scientific information of what a calorie is. But uh, we're just going to keep this real simple and just make sure that you understand that, that this is the energy. It's a really good simple definition. This is the energy in food, in drinks. Okay, so everything that you get out of a food product that, that supplies energy is, or basically has calories in it, is all caloric energy. There's other things in food. We have vitamins and minerals and, and, and all that, and, and those things support other bodily functions. They're, it's not that they're not important, they're extremely important. But when we're talking about energy, okay, unused energy turns in our bodies to body fat, okay? So this is really what a lot of people are concerned about uh, in their diet is caloric intake. Just know that there's more caloric value in food besides fat. That's what everybody likes to talk about. Low fat, no fat, no sugar, you know, all that stuff. Um, so there are several sources there's actually three sources in food products of caloric energy. So those three sources of caloric energy come from these three things and these three things only. Fats, and there's all different types of fats. I'm not going to get into that, but just in general, fats, protein, and carbs, or the full name, carbohydrates. These are the only three things in a food product that actually has energy in them. And there, there actually is a fourth, but it falls under the category of carbs, because when our body uh, is processing carbs and when it's processing this, it treats it basically the same way. Um, that's sugar. Doesn't matter what kind of sugar it is, whether it's naturally occurring sugar or added sugar to a food. Carbs and sugar, when the body processes it, are treated the same in the same exact category. Okay, so that's when you eat when you eat or drink a lot of sugar, it gives you a rush. That is because glucose is a really common type of uh, sugar we have in our food. Glucose is what we call a monosaccharide, and that is a really simple. Uh, really simple form of energy so our body can break it down really fast and that's why we get such an immediate energy rush from from sugar and from carbs okay these other two things are very nutrient i'm sorry they're very calorie dense as well um so so those are the only three things in food that have caloric energy okay now we're going to look at a label here i'm going to try to adjust my camera to work. Hopefully you can see this a little better. But when you look at a at a nutrition label, it tells you the amount of calories in the food product. Um, and it tells you the amount in grams of protein, of uh, carbohydrates, and of uh, total fat. Okay. So we can find our total fat right here. Our total fat is seven grams. Our total carbohydrates are 25 grams, and our protein is one gram. Okay, and these are the only three things in our food product that have calories. Our total calorie uh, value for for the serving, and the serving in this case is three cookies. One one common misconception misconception is that everything on this nutrition label that's the contents of the entire package. That's definitely not true. We have to look and see what the serving size of that product is to have an accurate understanding of what the nutrition information for that food is. Okay. So let me tell you and, and show you a way to, uh, of, of how they figure out how many calories are in each serving of food. Okay. And we're going to refer back to this package in just a minute. 
So we're going to get a new sheet of paper here. And we're going to talk about um, the, the calorie content of a gram of protein, of a gram of fat, and of a gram of uh, carbohydrates. Okay. So protein has four calories per gram. Okay. Carbohydrates also have four calories per gram. Fats, on the other hand, are, are more dense, and they actually contain a whopping nine calories per gram. So I think that's one reason why people are, are hung up on fat in the diet, just because they are so dense in calories. Um, but they're, they're not the only thing in food products that have calories. Okay. So just keeping this in mind, you can actually look at a package and figure out um, the way that they find out the, the caloric value. So looking at this package, um, roughly seven grams of total fat per serving. OK, so we're going to put that number out here. Seven grams. Our protein, we didn't we don't have much protein in a uh, in an Oreo, just one gram per serving. But our carbohydrates, we have a lot of carbs because it has a lot of has a lot of bread in it and a lot of sugar. Twenty five grams. OK. So we're just going to do some real um, rough math right here. And I'm going to show you roughly how they come up with the caloric value. So twenty five grams roughly of carbs. Well, twenty five times four equals a hundred. We can do four times one, and that's real easy. That gives us four. And then um, look at our fats here, nine times seven. Just remember these are all rough figures. Some of these things are, uh, are rounded up. Some are rounded down. Um, but nine times seven is 63, I believe. So we, we can come up with rough calorie information just by doing this. And this adds up to 167, okay, which is more than 160. Most of the time on food packages, we round in multiples of 10. So we go from like 160 to 170 to 180, so on and so forth. Um, if, if they produce this food product and said that it had 170 calories in it, they would be lying. And in a way, I guess you could say that they're lying that it only has 160. But just remember, these are all rough figures and uh, they tend to round down on food packages. So I said in multiples of 10, so they would round it back down to 160. So that's that's how we actually come up with our with our caloric value, just by knowing what these things are. OK. So that's enough about the nutrition label. And I'm going to talk about ingredients, how those are listed, talk about what allergens are, talk about manufactured information. And that, that will basically wrap us up for this little lesson. Um, so let's talk about ingredients. We're going to use the Oreo package again. And I'm going to zoom this in to where we can look at the ingredients. Um, and there's, there's quite a few ingredients. Some of these are... Um, some of these are things that we have a hard time pronouncing, I think. But but there's just a ton of stuff in here. Uh, one thing just to know about food products is that all of our ingredients are listed in order from the most in weight to the least in weight. So it's not volume. It's about weight. So the, the component of, of Oreos that has the most weight is unbleached and rich flour. Okay. And then after that, it has in parentheses some more specific things um, that are that are in those products. But but just know that about ingredients that that's a real simple thing to know. Is that the ingredients are listed in order from the heaviest to the lightest of, of how that product is composed of those ingredients. OK, so that's just a real short thing about the ingredients portion of the label. OK, now let's talk about allergens. OK, this is something that I think is real uh, important to know. Food allergens are 
are I think becoming more common now than maybe than what they've ever been. And that can be for different reasons. Maybe it's just because we're more aware of uh, of allergens now. But but there are eight different allergens that that the FDA requires to be labeled on a package. And we're going to look. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll talk about what the allergens are. I'll go over what those eight allergens are, and then we'll look at some packages here to see if we can find the allergens. Okay, so I told you that there were eight, eight required allergens that had to be explicitly stated. Okay, and these are really easy to group. Um, and I think when you, you see the way that I group them, it's going to make sense. Okay. So there are eight different allergens that have to be stated. Okay. So the first two I'm going to put are milk and eggs. Okay. And these can be grouped. This, this is just a way for you to remember what those allergens are. I group these. I call this the refrigerator group. Because these are things that you keep in your refrigerator. So milk and eggs, that, that's two of the eight allergens. Okay, the next ones are soy and wheat. And I group these as the grain group. Because these are two really common grains. Easy way to remember it. Okay. Um, we have tree nuts and peanuts. There's a difference between these two things. Tree nuts are things like almonds, pecans, walnuts, and then peanuts are, are very different. They're, they're a legume, and, and peanuts are actually formed in the ground. Uh, peanuts are legumes just like beans are, um, except beans don't grow underground, uh, but peanuts do. We just call this the nut group, um, and that's just the easiest way for my kids usually to remember that. And then the last one, the last little group, I call this the fish group, um, but we have uh, shellfish and then just fish. So shellfish can be things like uh, like shrimp, crawfish, uh, crabs, fish, just any any other kind of fish that you can think of. And this is simply the fish group. So really easy way to remember what those allergens are. Is just to, to remember it like this. Um, our eight allergens are milk, eggs, soy, wheat, tree nuts, peanuts, shellfish, and fish. Um, allergens are a real thing, uh, and, and, and they're really something to be concerned about. If a product does not have an allergen in it, uh, I don't know if I have an example. I don't think I have an example today of anything that doesn't have an allergen. Um, but if a food product does not have an allergen in it and it's produced in a facility where things that do have allergens in them are produced, then they have to say that on the package because sometimes stray things get into food uh, when, it's being, when it's being produced. And food companies have to, ha have to cover the, their selves in the case of a lawsuit if something were to accidentally happen. If an allergen was in a food and it wasn't stated that it, it was possibly there, uh, they could they could be sued and um, it would just be a big mess. The company itself could go out of business. So they're they're really careful about doing those things. So we'll look at the Oreo package again, and then I'll show you uh, another one. Um, but it has a really small allergen statement right here, and it does contain two ingredients that have allergens, which are wheat and soy. So that's part of the grain group. You know, some people might would think that this would have milk in it and in eggs, and I'm really surprised that it doesn't actually. Um, but but this does not contain any nuts. Obviously, does not contain any kind of fish. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna swap the camera back around again because I think it'll be easier for you to see um, this label. But this has. Uh, this has a little more to its allergen statement. Okay, and we can look at that and um, 
and it says uh, contains wheat ingredients and it says corn used in this product may contain soybeans so a person may not be allergic to to soy they just may be allergic to wheat i, I don't really know exactly how that works but um you know if they're allergic to wheat or, or or vice versa maybe they're allergic to soy but they're not allergic to wheat well if they looked at this and if they just said well it contains wheat then, then the person with the soy allergy could say, well, I can eat that because it does, doesn't have soy in it. But they're, they're just saying here that there's a possibility that, that traces of soy could be in here. Uh, and they just put that out as a forewarning to those people. Um, if a person with an allergen consumes a product like this and something happens to them, because the statement is on the package, uh, then the company is not liable. Okay, so that's our allergens. And then the last thing we're going to talk about is manufacturing information. And I'm just going to work off of this page on manufacturing info, but usually um, they put the name of the facility. Um, usually they put an address. It may not be a street address, but it might just say uh, the, the city and state and the zip code. Okay. When you look on the Oreos package, it has our stuff right here and, and surprisingly oreos or at least this pack is not made in the united states it's made in mexico um, but that manufacturer is based out of east hanover new jersey product was made in mexico if there was a product uh problem problem with this product you would write to this company or in some cases um a lot, lot on a lot of our newer stuff it gives us websites and numbers too and those are two other things that oftentimes show up is a website and a phone number it's not required to put the website and the phone number but but it is required that, that a person could easily access um access the manufacturer in case there was an issue with that product uh, so that the proper recall could be made if, if necessary. Okay, so this may not have been the most interesting video in the world. I, I hope that you at least learned something from this video. Um, so the next time that you, you reach for a snack or, or a drink or something out of your refrigerator or your pantry, hopefully by now after watching this video, you understand that there's more to the package than just the color and just the mascot. And just the food product on the inside, there's there's an awful lot of information out there that uh, that that consumers really need to know about. So, uh, with that being said, Mr. Lazarin, I, I appreciate the the opportunity again, uh, and and I'm and pretty much finished with this.